Today we're conquering the question, how many photos do you actually need for an HDR? Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we are conquering a question I had on my mind recently because newer cameras are allowing us to take HDRs with more and more photos. In fact, I've been shooting with the Sony a7R 4 and it allows you to bracket nine different exposures together. So this begs the question, how many photos do you actually need to create a great HDR? Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with an HDR, it stands for High Dynamic Range, and it's basically a technique that allows you to capture multiple different images at different exposures and then combine them together in post-production to get more of the light information, more of the dynamic range than you could with a single photo. So I went out in downtown Chicago with my Sony a7R 4 and took a nine exposure bracketed HDR. And we're gonna see how it stacks up versus using a single image HDR, the traditional three image HDR. And by the way, you can also download these sample raw images so you can do the tests for yourself if you'd like to as well. Let's get into it. We got a great episode for you. So here we are in Lightroom. We've got nine different exposures. Now each of these changed by 0.7 stops. So we have a lot of dynamic range to work with. And you can see the darker photos, the reason we have the darker photos is to capture information in the lights. You can see I have a lot of sky information here. Now the lighter photos is to capture information in the darks. For instance, I have a lot of information in the shadows. So let's hit G for grid view. Now Lightroom makes this incredibly easy on us. All I have to do is hit Control or Command A to select all my images. We're gonna right click and I'm gonna go down to Photo Merge and here we have HDR. So all I have to do is click there and maybe wait a couple of minutes, but basically it just does the job for me. So here we have a preview of the HDR from nine different photographs and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Merge. It just takes a second, but then it spits out our HDR. It couldn't be easier. So here we have our HDR. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just rename this. So we'll just call this nine exposure because again, we wanna make sure we test this against our other exposures. So we have our nine exposure, that looks pretty good. Now let's go for a traditional three exposure. For this, you wanna choose something that's underexposed, properly exposed and overexposed. So we're gonna choose the first photo in our series, which is a neutral exposure, a very dark and a very light image. Again, right click on them, go to photo merge and over here to HDR. There we go, we click on that. Same deal as the last time. So we went ahead and pulled everything together. Let's hit this merge button. Just takes a couple of seconds and gives us back our HDR. So let's go ahead and double click on this HDR and we're going to rename this to three exposure. So for our last test, we're actually just gonna be using a single image, but I got a little trick up my sleeves. What we're gonna do is take that image and create virtual copies. And that's gonna allow us to create multiple different exposures of that single image and then pull it all back together to create that HDR. So let's just go, go ahead and start with my first image here. I'm gonna hit the number six on it just to make it red. Uh, we're gonna right click here and we're gonna go to create a virtual copy. So with my virtual copy here, let's just go to our develop module real quick and we're just gonna bring our exposure up a little bit. So you can start to see it just kind of like an overexposed photo. Now let's go back to our grid view. We're gonna right click on the same photo again, go to create another virtual copy, D for our develop module, and we're gonna bring our exposure down a little bit and then back to hit G for the grid view. So this is our first, just, you know, our singular photo here. This is our underexposed version of the same photo and our overexposed version of the same photo. Technically, it's three different virtual copies, but it's from the same exact image. Now, this would be incredibly useful for you if you didn't take a bunch of photos to merge together for an HDR. If you only had one, you can use this technique. So let's hold, hold Control or Command, click on the three of them. You know the deal right now. Go down to Photo Merge and over here to HDR. Just hit this Merge button. It takes a second. And now we're going to get ready to compare our three results. So let's just go ahead and click on the three of these to start with. I'm gonna hit P to flag those as picks, and then we're just gonna filter this so I only see my picks, because as of now, I only wanna see my HDRs. Now let's go up to view. We're gonna go down to our grid view style, and I'm gonna click on expanded cells, so here we can see the name. So we have our one exposure, our three exposure, and our nine exposure. 
what I want to do for now is explain, just show the one exposure and the nine exposure and see how those two stack up. Because if there's not a big difference there, well, then there's really just not going to be a difference with our three exposure as well. So let's hold control or command. I'm going to click on the two of those and we're just going to hit C for compare. So we've got our one exposure. And again, this is from a single photograph that we just processed out multiple times and our nine exposure, which is from nine different photographs. So let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, shadow levels, for instance. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in, and this is on an A7R4, so it's a you know many megapixel camera. We're zooming in, and I'm at a one to one ratio. Let's go ahead here to a two to one, so we can really start to see the details between the one exposure and the nine exposure and see how these stack up. All right, let's get even closer here, a three to one zoom. All right, now what I am seeing, which is a little bit more surprising, I'm it's the difference so much in the light levels is actually relatively similar, but what I am seeing is a lot more clarity here in the shadows. For instance, you can see on the one exposure how we do have a lot, quite a bit of noise, and here in my nine exposure, there's basically no noise to speak of, and that continues out through my different areas of the photograph. Uh, all the way up until here, you can see we have a decent bit of noise and here we don't. Now, uh, here we are running into an issue. That's because these are flags. They're flags that are moving. <laughs> and when you take multiple photographs, it's going to stitch them together in this weird way. Now, you can remove what's known as ghosts, a little bit spooky, in Lightroom. And that can help with this. But this is kind of just an issue that you're you may always have a little bit of struggle with. Uh, removing ghosts, and you saw that option earlier, can help with this, but ultimately a lot of the time I wind up uh, compositing this stuff back together again. But again, the biggest difference I'm noticing is in noise levels, and you know, this was not shot at a very high ISO. So noise levels, and now let's go ahead and take a look at our highlights. Let's just zoom that out to a one-to-one. -one and see how this looks. And it does look like I've got more information in my highlights here on my nine exposure than I do on my single exposure. But I gotta say, just like side by side, the images look very, very similar. So now let's take a look at our three exposure versus our nine exposure. So let's hit C for our compare tool and zooming all the way in, you know, it does look like we've got slightly better noise information here in our nine exposure than our three exposure. Uh, it just seems like a little bit less grain in certain areas. Yeah, like, I mean, you, you gotta kind of really, really zoom in. Like if we go to a four to one, this area, for instance, here looks a lot smoother on the four, on the nine exposure than here on the three exposure. But as far as dynamic range goes, they actually look very, very similar. And part of this is because Lightroom is processing out, hey, that pigeon did not move at all during these exposures. Part of that is because Lightroom is actually processing out some automatic settings. Now, as far as our light levels go, they look very, very similar, but these are, these are processed by Lightroom. So I wanna go in here and start pushing this a little bit further and see how much information we can get uh, in comparison. So let's go ahead and click on our nine exposure. Uh, we're just gonna hit D for our develop module. Now you can see directly from Lightroom, it's gonna push and pull my sliders around to where it's gonna try to get the most possible information in this photo. But I'm, I'm interested personally in our dark areas. So let's go ahead and just zoom into these dark, dark areas here under the bridge and see if I just bump my exposure up how much information I have there and what that actually looks like. Now we can see we do have more than enough information there. Maybe I'll just bring my shadow levels back down a little bit. Uh, we do have more than enough information to work with there. It's starting to look a little bit grainy here in my nine exposure. Let's go ahead and compare that with the shadow levels of our one exposure. So I'm gonna hit D for our develop module. Again, I'm gonna click, we're gonna do it a, a four to one zoom here. I just gotta find my place back on the bridge and we're gonna bring up our exposure. Ooh, yikes. Okay, now we're starting to see the real difference. Okay, so let's hit G for our grid view. This is our one exposure and our nine exposure. You can see I bumped the exposure of this one up a little bit, still looks great. I bumped the exposure of this one up a little bit, not as great. Let's hit C for the compare view. Uh, and now we can start to see where I think this really, really shines. It just takes a second to load. 
But here's our single exposure HDR. You can see this nine exposure one is still loading. Obviously, it's an absolutely huge file. It takes information from all of those. Uh, I think this honestly is what sells it here. Look at all this detail that I'm seeing, not just in the dark depths of the bridge, but also behind there. So I'm still seeing all these shadows in the dark, uh, but this lighter area is not overexposed. In this case, I actually am a decent bit overexposed in the background there. So, and that's gonna continue throughout all of these areas. So not only am I getting much better noise performance in our nine exposure, uh, but just the dynamic range, as you can see, is, is very, very different, uh, which is interesting to note because before I made any large adjustments to the photos, uh, they actually wasn't that big of a difference. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the three versus the nine. We're just gonna hit D for our develop module. We're just gonna crank up our exposure there just a little bit, okay? And I'm gonna hit G for our grid view. You know what, I actually wanna uh, click on the two of these. We're just gonna sync settings and I'm just gonna go to check none we're just gonna sync exposure uh, just to do it the absolute fairest way. All right, so now our exposure for these is the exact same. Let's just uh, remove this. There we go. So now our exposure for these two images is the exact same. We can still look and see we have a slightly better dynamic range, but let's hit C for our compare and see how this looks. All right. Uh, so we bumped up the exposure considerably for both of these. And I gotta say the image on the right still to me looks a lot better than the image on the left. Not only in noise performance, but also again in terms of dynamic range. So that's our shadows. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our highlights now. So we're gonna go to D for our develop module. Uh, we're gonna bring our exposure down. There we go, to 1.85. Okay, I'm gonna hold Control or Command and click on, we'll just do all three of those. There we go. It's a shame you can't do compare with three different photos. There we go, let's click on synchronize and see how this looks. There we are, so let's go ahead and click on nine and number three, hit C for our compare, and just zoom, <laughs> we don't need to be all the way that zoomed in because not really informa any information there. Uh, here we just see a little bit of sensor dust. Uh, overall, I would say these look very, very similar. I'm not seeing any noticeable differences. I don't see one image having highlight clipping, uh, you know, in another image that is retaining more detail. In fact, let's go ahead and compare these two now. Uh, this actually, we do see an immediate difference. Let's just, we just need to switch the, uh, there we go. We just need to switch the X and the Y. So here's our one exposure and our nine exposure. Here, I think the difference starts to become pretty obvious. With this one exposure, uh, we just have a big bright spot here on the top right, here in the nine exposure. We actually have a lot of sky information. Uh, that also extends, let's go ahead and zoom out, that also extends back here behind our buildings. Let's zoom in. Uh, with the one exposure, we're really just not getting much information at all here uh, between the buildings and with our nine exposure, uh, we are getting a lot more information there. So. Uh, obviously between the one exposure and the nine exposure, we're seeing a big difference. Let's hit C for the compare uh, so we can see our uh, three exposure versus our nine exposure. And here, again, pretty similar in terms of exposure. Maybe we have a little bit, yeah, I think we do have a little bit more dynamic range in our nine exposure versus the three, but I gotta say it's pretty similar. Alrighty, well, let's go ahead. I'm just gonna, uh, click on our nine exposure here. We're just gonna go to auto. So just simply click on this auto button right there. Boom, and it just does exactly what it thinks it should do. Uh, in this case, it looks pretty great. And let's go ahead and hit G for our uh, grid view once more. We'll bring back our sidebar and go back to sync settings. And we'll just go ahead and sync all those back together again. So they all look basically how they did when they first started. This is super, super interesting. Now, don't forget, uh, I want you guys to be able to jump in and do this test on your own. So all of these nine raw images are available absolutely for free on flurn.com. You can download them in the link right below. My impressions here are definitely a difference between our single exposure HDR and our uh, three versus nine. There, there is a big difference there. If you don't do any real adjustments to your photos though, if you just kind of like have it do auto, 
they actually look surprisingly similar, more similar than I would have thought. To me, the biggest difference that I've noticed here was the ISO performance. And that kind of makes sense, right? Because it's basically just not cranking up your ISO to capture information in your shadows versus your highlights. You're actually taking different exposures using your native ISO. Now that's gonna depend on the settings that you use for your camera, but the ISO settings, especially with that nine exposure HDR, I mean, it was beautifully clean, even in the shadows and even when we started to bump up our exposure on those shadows. So to me, this was actually the biggest difference. The exposure differences, which I personally thought would be more noticeable, were not really there. And that's the whole kind of point originally with HDRs is to get the high dynamic range, to get more of a dynamic range. In other words, more information in your shadows and highlights. I think the benefits of HDR are perfectly clear. Whether you need a nine exposure HDR, uh, maybe not for just exposure, but if you are looking to get beautiful noise levels throughout your exposure range, I think it actually really does make a difference. Now, just a couple of details on these photographs. So one, I actually did not use a tripod for these. I just held the camera very still. I had it propped up on a ledge and I just held the button down for all nine exposures. So you don't need to use a tripod, but it can be very helpful because you want everything to be in about the same place. Now, the second comment here has to do with the flags that were moving during our exposures. So when we process these HDRs out, we have a lot of like weird artifacts going on. So I went ahead and reprocessed this out, choosing my de-ghost options set to high. Now this did completely fix those issues. Instead of having weird artifacts, the flags came out crystal clear, but I did notice that the ISO performance looks a lot worse. So basically it just seems like it's using less of my images to process out this HDR. So it's definitely a push and pull where I see the real benefits here are for things like architecture photography and where things aren't really moving in your scene. You can take a large bracketed set of exposures and get beautiful dynamic range as well as noise performance throughout your entire image from shadows all the way to highlights. Keep in mind, this is just one test. Obviously, there are different situations where exposures could be even more extreme and a higher count HDR would be more helpful. For any of you guys who don't have exposure bracketing built into your camera, you can actually do this manually as long as you have some exposure adjustments on your camera. So you can simply just take a properly exposed photo, an underexposed photo, and an overexposed photo. Try not to move between those different exposures, but you can change the little exposure dial on your camera, then merge those images together in post-production. If you've ever wondered why the camera in your phone is so good, it's actually doing all of this stuff automatically. Amazing technology at work. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a real eye opener for me. Honestly, a lot of things that I didn't expect came out of this huge exposure bracketed HDR, and I would love to hear your thoughts. So let us know in a comment right down below. And as always, if you want to get a free tutorial from us every single week, just click on that subscribe button. And if you want to really enhance your Photoshop and photography skills, check out Flurn Pro. You can find more information on that in the description right down below. Thanks again, and I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone.